Hello everyone. Today I am going to discussing about the sequencing problem for n jobs through k machines. Let's see the problem. Four jobs one two three four are to be processed on each of the five machines. That is A B C D and E in the order of A B C D E. Find the total minimum elapsed time if no passing of jobs is permitted also find the ideal time for each machine here number of jobs are 4 which is more than 2 jobs let consider n number of jobs and the number of machines are 5 which is more than 2 machines let consider k number of machines so this type of sequencing problem we are calling as a n jobs through k machines let's see the solution since the given problem is to be sequenced on five machines so we have to convert given problem into a two machine problem by following steps first step is find the minimum processing time on first machine that is here machine a and also find the minimum processing time for last machine that is here machine E. Moreover we have to find the maximum processing time for the second machine to the second last machine. Here second machine is B and second last machine is D. Observe the table. Here minimum processing time for machine A for all the jobs that is 7, 6, 5 and 8. Among these values minimum value is 5. Similarly minimum processing time for machine E is 6. And observe that maximum processing time for machine B is 6 and machine C is 5. And machine D is 6. Among these values, maximum value is 6. Here, step 1 is completed. Then, we have to go for the second step. That is, check the following inequality. Minimum AI is greater than or equal to the maximum BICIDI or minimum EI is greater than or equal to the maximum of B i C i D i. We know that minimum of A i is 5, maximum of B i C i D i is 6. So, 5 is greater than or equal to 6. Similarly, 6 is greater than or equal to 6. So, next step is, if any of the inequalities in step 2 are satisfied, this method is applicable and go for the next step. So, first to check the inequalities. First inequality is 5 is less than the 6. So, first inequality is not satisfying. Second inequality is 6 equal to the 6. So, second inequality is satisfied. So, next we have to move to the step 4 that is in addition to step 2 if total machining time for machine b machine c up to the machine k minus 1 equal to the constant that is c is positive constant for all the jobs that is i equal to 1 2 3 to n jobs then determine the optimal sequence for n jobs where the two machines are first and last see here first we find the inequality in the step 2 along with the step 2 one more we have to cross check that is the total processing time for the except the first and last machines remaining all the machines for all the jobs processing time for the except the first and last machines remaining all the machines for all the jobs is constant or not this is we have to cross check. If the total machining time for the machines B2K-1 is 
not constant then we are defining the two machines such that g equal to ma plus mb plus up to the mk minus 1 which means summation of processing times for first two machine to second last machine and h equal to mb plus mc plus up to the mk which means summation of processing times for second machine to last machine so first we have to check the relation of mb plus mc plus md plus up to the mk minus 1 is constant or not for all the jobs here mk minus 1 is the second last machine that is the machine d so for job 1 machining time for machine b machine c and machine d is 5 plus 2 plus 3 that is the 10 for job 2 6 plus 4 plus 5 that is 15 for job 3 4 plus 5 plus 6 that is 15 for job 4 3 plus 3 plus 2 that is the 8 so mb plus mc plus md is not constant for the all the jobs so step 5 is satisfying then we are defining the two machines that is g and hr g equal to ma plus mb plus mc plus md and machine h is mb plus mc plus md plus me next we define the machine g and h first we'll go for the machine g so that is machining time of the machine a plus machining time of the machine b plus machining time of the machine c plus machining time of the machine d so here we'll see for the job one that is the ma so nothing but it's a 7 plus 5 12 plus 2 14 14 plus 3 that is the 17 similarly for the job 2 is 6 plus 6 that is 12 12 plus 4 16 16 plus 5 that is the 21 next to job 3 is 5 plus 4 9 9 plus 5 14 14 plus 6 that is the 20 next is 8 plus 3 11 11 plus 3 14 14 plus 2 16 next we have to move to the machine h we are defining machine h is machining time of the b plus machining time of the c plus machining time of the d plus machining time of the e for all the jobs so first we have to see for the job one so this is the 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 3 10 10 plus 9 that is the 19 so next we move to the job 2 that is 6 plus 4 10 10 plus 5 15 15 plus 5 that is 25 so next one is the 4 plus 5 9 9 plus 6 15 15 plus 8 23 23 so next one next one is the job 4 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 6 that is 14 so we converted the problem into the two machines that is the g and h then we will be obtaining the optimum sequence by using of the two machine algorithm for this one first we have to draw the optimum sequence table here observe that one Optima sequence table having the four number of columns which is equal to the number of jobs here number of jobs are the four jobs and one more thing we have to remember here jobs for the machine g we have to fill from the starting of the table similarly we have to fill the jobs for the machine h from the end of the table here minimum processing time is the 14 so that is for the job 4 on machine H. 
so we have to place the job for in the last position of the sequence table and we have to remove the job for column so i have to here i place the job for from the end of the table and remove the job for column so next minimum value is this 17 for the job one on machine g so <clears throat> so we have to place the job one at first position in optimal sequence table and remove the job one column next minimum value is the 20 for job 3 on machine g so we have to place the job 3 in the sequence table after the job 1 and we have to remove the job 3 column so next to minimum value is the 21 for the job 2 on the machine g so we have to place the job 2 after the job 3 so next i have to find out the total elapsed time and ideal time for the each machine for this one draw the tabular column here first column is consisting of the job that is the sequence of the jobs that is 1 3 2 4 and it is consisting of the machine a machine b machine c machine d and machine g each of the machine is consisting of the in time and out time here in time is representing the to receive the job so here in time represent the receiving time for the job respected machine and out time is represent the in time plus out time so we have to start first with the machine a so for the first job job one so in time so, so receiving time is the zero for the job one and out time is the machining time plus in time so for the machine a and the job one so in time is the zero and out time is machining time plus the processing time that is the zero plus seven that is the seven next machine a for the job three so in time is the seven why it is the seven me up to the seven hours machine a is engaging with the machine so job one so after the seven hours only it will be received the another job so that is the job three so in time for the job three is seven and out time is seven plus five so that is the 12. next is job two for the machine a so in time is the 12 and out time is 12 plus 6 that is 18 next job 4 in time is the 18 and out time is 18 plus 8 that is the 26 so next we will move to the machine b here machine b for the job 1 here in time is 7 hours why it is the 7 hours mean job 1 is engaged up to the 7 hours on the machine a so it will be moved to the next machine that is the machine b after the 7 hours so in time is the 7 and out time is the in time plus processing time so machine b and the job 1 so out time is in time that is 7 plus 5 that is the 12 next third job on the machine b so in time is 12 hours see here job 3 will be moved next to machine that is the machine b after the 12 hours and moreover machine b also is engaged up to 12 hours so after 12 hours only it will be received the next job and moreover job 3 also it will be moved to the next machine after the 12 hours so in time for the machine b for the job 3 is 12 hours and out time is machining time plus processing time so that is the 12 plus 4 that is the 16 so next is job 2 so next is job 2 for the machine b so in time is 18 why it is 18 mean after the 16 hours machine b is free but job 2 will be moved to the next machine that is the b after the 18 hours only so in time for the job 2 on the machine b is 18 and out time is in time plus 
processing time that is the 6 so total it will become the 24 so next is job 4 for the machine b see job 4 is it is engaged up to the 26 hours on a machine a so it will be moved after the 26 hours only. here but machine b is is engaged up to 24 hours job 2 but it will receive the job 4 after the 26 hours only so in time is the 26 and out time is 26 plus 3 that is the 29 so next we have to move to the machine c so what is the in time for the job 1 on the machine c is it should be the 12 why it is the 12 mean up to the 12 hours it is engaged on the machine b so in time is the 12 and out time is so machine c and job 1 in time plus processing time that is the 12 plus 2 14 so next is so job 3 for the machine c so in time is 16 why it is a 16 mean job 3 will be moved after the 16 hours old. so in time is the 16 and out time is 16 plus 5 so 21 so next for the job 2 on the machine c so in time is 21 or 24 it should be 24 only why mean so job 2 will be moved after the 24 hours only. so in time is the 24 and processing time is 24 plus 4 28 so next is the job 4 on the machine c so in time is 28 or 29 it should be 29 only so 29 and out time is 29 plus 3 that is the so next we will move to the another machine that is the machine D. So in time is the 14 and out time is 14 plus 3 that is the 17. Next we will move to the job 3 on machine D. So in time is 21. Why does it 21 mean? So machine D is free after the 17 hours but job 3 will be moved next to machine that is the machine T after the 21 hours. Old. So here in time for the job 3 on the machine D is 21 and out time is 21 plus 6 that is the 27. Next job 2 on machine D. So in time is 28. So why mean? So job 2 will be moved after the 28 hours only. So out time is 28 plus 5 that is the 33. So next one is the job 4 on machine D. See here, so job 4 is fully engaged up to the 32 hours with the machine C. It will be moved next to machine that is the machine D after the 32 hours. But machine D is, is engaged up to the 33 hours with the job 2. So it will be free after the 33 hours. So it will be receive the next to job that is the job 4 after the 33 hours only. So in time for the job 4 on the machine D is 33 and out time is 33 plus 2 that is the 35. So next we have to see for the machine E. So what is the in time for the machine E is, is 17 and out time is 17 plus 9 that is the 26. 17 plus 9 that is the 26. So next in time is for the job 3 on machine E is 27. So why it's 27 mean? Job 3 will be moved after the 27 hours. Old. So out time is 27 plus 8 that is the 35. Next one is the job 2 on the machine E. So it is the 33 or 35 mean? It should be 35 only. Why mean? Machine E will be receive the next to job that is the job 2 after the 35 hours only. So here in time for the job 2 on machine E is 35. And processing time is the 10. So total out time is 35 plus 10 that is the 45. So next job 4 on the machine E. In time is 35 or 45. It should be 45. Why it is 45 only? 45 only means. So job 4 will be move after the 35 hours on to the next machine. But machine E will receive next to job that is the job 4 after the 45 hours only. So in time for the job 4 on the machine E is 45 
and out time is 45 plus 6 that is the 15. So next we have to, so here total elapsed time is the 51 hours. Next we have to calculate the ideal time for the each machine. See here ideal time, see observe in time and out time for the all the jobs for the machine A. So it started with this 7 and ended with this 7. So, so next is started with 7, ended with the 12. Next started with the 12, ended with 18. Next ended with, started with the 18 and end with the 26. In between, there is a no waiting time. But it will complete the, so total machining for the all the jobs, 26 hours only. But total elapsed time is the 51. So ideal time is 51 minus 26. And that is the 25. Next we will cross check for the ideal time for the machine B that is see here machine is started after the 7 hours only. So initial ideal time is 7 plus see here. So for the job one started with 7 hours and ended with 12 hours. After that one it started 12 hours and 16 hours. Then it will started 18 hours. See here 2 hours waiting time is there. After that one it is completed 24 hours, then again it started 26 hours. So here also 2 hours waiting time. And after that one it completed the total processing time for the machine B is 29. But total elapsed time is the 51. So another ideal time is 51 minus 29. So total ideal time is the 32. Next to C for the machine C. So initial waiting time is the 12. Next after that one here 2 hours. So here 2 hour, 3 hours, here 1 more hour and final ideal time is 51 minus 32. Next to see the machine D, initial waiting time is the 14. So next to here 21 minus 17 that is this uh, 4. Next to here 28 minus 27 that is the 1. And Final ideal time that is the 51 minus 35. So total ideal time is the 35 for the machine. Last one is the you have to see for the machine G. Initial waiting time is the uh, 17. After that one, one hour here that is and 35, 35, 45, 45. So another one is the so 51 minus 51 here sorry here it is the 51 so total waiting time is the 80 so thank you